Okay. Well, I'm not really wanting to show this particular game. Um, this was today's league match and first game in the season for 2024-2025. And I'll take you through, but you'll see why I am disgusted with this game. <laughs> so we played as black, which is favorite color playing as black over the board. But you know, I, I can play both both colors, but everybody has a favorite color, don't they? And the opponent opened very quickly with the D4, and then we just blocked. We took our time, and because the way that we pushed out this first pawn move, I'm thinking, oh, speed merchant. So maybe we can take a little bit of time and get a bit of focus because we've been practicing the longer play calculations. But the quickly whipped out the bishop move, I'm thinking this must be some sort of set play thing. I know it's early doors, but they just whipped out the bishop. I took my time and then I played this put, um, knight move here. Uh, and when I say I took my time, I probably took about five minutes or even longer um, over the next move. Just to kind of, as we've mentioned before, when I'm playing the speedy people online, I try and do that pause moment because it kind of rattles the cage a little bit because they want to get the game over and done with but this was like a i can't remember the time controls is it 90 minutes and 10 seconds or something like that 10 second increment so it's a fairly long time it's proper classical so they quickly moved the paw now and then we took our time with our next move really taking my time and then just develop the paw and pushing through here at this moment and it's feeling fairly simplified at the minute, but I was just taking my time over the move so much that, you know, I think they must have done like a, a marathon, a marathon walk um, by the time I'd made each move. And so we attacked the bishop and we castled. I didn't move this fast at all in any way, shape. And then they brought the knight out, brought the pawn up, looking to stop the knight from jumping in. And brought the knight up so it looks fairly normal ish but all i know is that there's potential for them to start messing around maybe getting the knight off or maybe trying to manage the center trying to squish the queen or something so they get a castle on the queen side and they start gathering information from us uh, regarding the position that we're looking to be in and then start pushing down Nothing to worry about here at this moment. So feeling fairly okay with what we're doing, but something was not quite sitting right with my position. It didn't feel as strong as what I would normally be, you know, opening up with um, black. So I was, again, overestimating the opponent's position on the board, even though it looked really simplified, computers kind of agreeing with it at this moment. And then they brought the bishop through. And this move here, my next move took absolutely ages. It must have been a good 15, 20 minutes for me to think of what's going to happen because they're going to end up doubling my pawns. And I'm so worried about this pawn pushing here because my queen has got no protection on it. If the bishop takes this knight, then the queen's got no protection so we're going to lose a pawn that's what i was thinking anyway yeah um i was thinking oh they're going to come here so if we do take then they could do this but i suppose we could take the queen but then are we losing out because then the bishop just goes back again and then we've lost a minor piece so there's all sorts of combinations going on in my head and i'm thinking we we might as well resign ourselves to the fact that we're going to have to double the pawns up didn't want to double the pawns because in our practice sessions we were trying to stay away from doubling the pawns so then i was working out well okay what are they going to do is the queen going to try and come around here to to get the king um after the knights disappeared now or is it going to be the rook coming across and down putting pressure on it's okay i've said to myself 
Right, that's what they're going to kind of look for. One of those pieces coming around to the side, putting a check on the king. We'll be able to bring the rook here. Shouldn't be too much problem, so we should be able to weather that attack. So we bring the rook across, knowing full well they're going to quickly come and take, which they did do. They were playing it like it was a, a blitz match uh, up till this point. And then we grabbed and then brought the rook across. So we decided, well, okay, if this pawn is going to be challenging us, we may as well just go and hit this pawn. Uh, computer doesn't like it, but I was so kind of fretful of this pawn having some magical powers. But the computer does not like, does not like that uh, manoeuvre. It felt good for me because I'm like saying to myself, well, let's get rid of this knight or something. And in my picture, I had his knight going here or had him come in attacking the bishop here. I didn't have a picture of him coming here, attacking our pawn. So that kind of messed up my calculation. I should have done that calculation of the knight coming here as well. So this was a whole different kind of pattern and position. So I reassessed and basically just brought the bishop back now, um, protecting the pawn. Queen is now blocked from, you know, protecting this pawn here. So that was a bit of a cause for concern. So it's almost like saying, damn, you messed that up. Right. But that's not the start of the problem. So the rook comes down. So as you can see, it looks fairly straightforward. The computer's agreeing with there. So we attack the knight and they come across with the rook. And as we said, we have the picture in our heads of, oh, we can simply just come and protect here. And the knight jumps in. At this moment in time, it's, it's like never here nor there. It's like Jawish type situation. In the back of my head, my subconscious was, yeah, um, I tunnel visioned and I says, oh, well, I'll just bring the rook here. You know, there's no harm or foul. So we do. Have a look at that gauge bar. Mate in one. The knight just needs to come here and put a check on because our queen is blocked by the bishop. So all of my calculation was around the queen being able to protect here if that kind of thing did happen. But now the bishop has blocked it. So I put my head down and I looked at the floor and I thought to myself, I'm going to have to wait for the gavel to drop, to drop on my head here because that was so, so silly. All that hard work of trying to find a good position mentally blocking off any attempt at squishing my king and then for this small tiny little bit here the bishop being here oh but the opponent didn't do that so that was a saving grace this was for that moment that brief moment there of that calculation and bringing that rook there that was absolutely terrible i felt really good getting towards this position but that minor mistake there that that cost me the game but unfortunately the opponent didn't see it and that comes back again to those um things that i was mentioning as part of our um development coming into these over the board type games is what if they don't yeah so when you do your calculations and you, you can get to say to yourself well what if they don't but not in the severity of this i mean this is like a checkmate this is a mate this is game over Yep, so the what if the don'ts isn't to that extreme. So I, I took that way too far. I, I didn't even, yeah, my calculation was wrong because of this bishop coming back here, having to defend because I didn't know that the knight was coming here. And that messed up my calculation from that point, really. So because they didn't and I realised, I thought I'd better get this knight off the board now. That was like a saving grace and I sat there and thought, well, this might be okay for us now. Might even be a slight advantage. In my head, I'm thinking, I think I can weather this storm now. Uh, I know the computer's just showing, it's like neither here nor there. But in my head, after that, taking that um, knight off the board, I thought, we probably might get an advantage here. Might even get a draw, but I'm thinking, it looks more advantageous. So we take it off the board. And now we're looking to try and get this pawn here. And we're thinking, right, okay, we can come here. If their queen is going to be doing something, I don't know what it's going to do at this moment in time. Is it going to defend? And I'm thinking, well, we're going to go here. We're going to come back and put a check on. And then they go and block the situation. 
so yeah my head was hurting already at this point from basically being checkmated in one but the opponent didn't see it and now the blocking and i'm thinking we're not going to get in here we might have to go for a draw but i resisted the urge to offer a draw and it wasn't because the opponent is lower rated than me um normally it's like if they're higher rated than me um i've been offering the draws because it's like hey you know i don't lose anything but i've said i want to go into these next over the board sessions with a different sort of mindset to say well if it's possible to go for a advantage and keep the advantage let's see if we can go for it so i refrained from offering any draws and they didn't look like they wanted to go for a draw so we took the pawn and in my mind i'm thinking if they take here then we can come back we've got to check on the king we could potentially take this off the ball but we do have a two on one here and maybe we could get some sort of back rank mate so I was getting a little bit giddy at this point, but not showing it. I was just calm as you like. I was thinking, crikey, so lucky that he didn't do that night move. So we bring the queen back and we capture. So now we have the threat of the back rank thing, but it doesn't look major to the computer. In my head, I'm thinking, what? Well, this could be it. This could be the one if he makes a mistake of some sort. I mean, I've really wanted to get here and have the two on one situation but that wasn't happening so they put a check on the king we move the king out of the way and we come and support because it's got an x-ray through i didn't want to spoil what we've developed so they moved the rook out of the way and i was thinking of trying to bring the rook here to try and go for here and i didn't know if that was going to be fast enough or not or should i just take a piece off the board and see if we can get some of these promoted because they're more highly developed up the board than their pawns here because they have a pawn majority here and all the while i'm also thinking if i did get the queen off would my pawns survive going up with the support of the king and the rook because they're high, more highly advanced than these so from this point on i was thinking i don't think i'm going to risk this one because timing i might lose out I mean, they're not going to dare come and take the pawn because of just get back rank mated. But maybe I could have done that move. Maybe I could, because it's showing a slight advantage. But we took the pawn. Didn't drop too much. And then they made space for their king. And then we went for the exchange of the queen. Um, in my head, I said, right, my pawns are slightly more up the board than theirs. We've been practicing end game type stuff. I'm going to go for it. Yeah, I'm actually going for seeing whether or not I can gain some further proper advantages in the game. But it's very rare that I win over the board games. I'm, I'm In the last season, it was like loads of draws, uh, one win, and um, I think it was two losses in the, in the tournament. Well, it's not too bad, you know what I mean? Um, so I can't grumble. But now looking at this end game, I'm thinking maybe there's something here. So they do grab and grab. So it's giving us an advantage there. I don't know what they were supposed to do from there. It's saying queen g3 check. Oh, putting a check on us. Ah, okay. So we would have just danced a bit maybe or maybe come here. I don't know. Anyway, that's the computer. The human didn't do that. They grabbed and we grabbed. So at this point now, I'm trying to believe that we're going to have better pawns so obviously they're going to be taken but i'm looking to get my king here and try and because this pawn is more up the board than theirs maybe the timing works for us so they grabbed and we brought the king up attacking the rook winning a bit of tempo there and we grabbed their pawn they put a check on we hide out hide away it's not saying we played it the best but i think the idea was there so they come round attacking the pawn and we defend and they started pushing i'm thinking no i'm sure ours are fast enough even if the rook comes up we can still either go for that situation with the pawn being there so that was my focal point so they brought their rook across brought it up then they put a check on and for a brief moment i thought oh no i've messed it up um because if he comes there but then the pawn can just take it 
And anyway, if he did go there, we'd still get the promotion at some point. So they brought the rook up and then we challenged the rook. And at this point, um, I couldn't have been happier. But looking at the tail of the tape, we have the rook, which obviously can deal with these. But rooks do have problems with linked pawns. So I, I had a little bit of a shudder of um, fear. You know, the goosebumps came up on my arms and I thought, oh my gosh, it's a good job I'm wearing a jumper because um, I'd be freaking out now. But because we do have the rook, we can start throwing our pawns up. So they're trying to push theirs up. Maybe they, I don't know if it would have worked or not, pushing this one because it was a bit further up the board. But they didn't do, so we start pushing our H pawn. And we're thinking it's, it's definitely going to be fast enough to get a queen, which we do. And they kindly up gave me the queen as well, which was nice of them, sportsmen, sportsman like. So they pushed the pawn, we put a check on the king. And still trying to be careful, don't want any stalemate situations. So we just grab in, bring the rook up now, just stopping the king from getting involved in any of that. Um, that felt... It's like a moment of maturity in my own eyes in the sense of just stop the king from moving doing something not that it could do anything but i was really pacing it a little bit i was going faster than i was going earlier but i was pacing it just trying to find those like, better positions king's just moving in and then we bring the queen up and then we go for the checkmate so yeah from the middle game um, happy with that, but definitely not happy with the mixing up of the calculation in the mid part of that game. I'm not happy with that at all. It's just, it's one of those where you say, oh, what the days they had a checkmate in one. Yeah, so my calculations, I don't know, I could have just maybe just taken it straight off. And this is saying Queen C7. Queen C7. Um, I'm not sure about any of that, but uh, let's see. So just maybe even taking the knight off the board, does that help? Before doing the rook thing? Oh, it's not, it's not worse, is it? So I should have just taken the knight off the board then. These small details mess up your whole game. So I'm... I'm happy we've got the win, but it's a shabby win. A sh absolutely shocking win. Um, but we, we live to fight another day and we, we help the team. Um, I don't know the full results of the games yet, so um, we'll find out. Hopefully the team did well and we, and we, we gained a, a win. So that's all good. So, yep, yeah, a nice start to the over-the-board chess season. Yes and no.